ShadCN makes it pretty easy to write relatively good looking forms without taking too much time. But one downside to it is it's relatively monotonous writing out all the form inputs over and over and over again, which is why this project over here I think is really cool because it gives you a visual way to actually build out your forms and it's gonna generate ShadCN related code for you. And you can just copy and paste it directly into your project. And especially when you're getting started on a brand new project, I think this has a lot of potential. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the site that I wanna talk about is this playground. I'll leave a link in the description for how you can access it, but it allows you to just come in here and say, you know what, I wanna have an input element. I wanna modify it to say that it's got this information, you know, maybe get rid of some of this stuff. Come in here just like that, we'll save it. And let's just add a few other random inputs into here. Now you can see off to the right hand side, I can generate code and it's gonna give me all of the code for that particular component. And I can just copy that and I can paste it directly into my project if I want to. Now I'm gonna show you exactly why I think this is useful, when I think it's not useful and so on. And I'm gonna use an example of a project that I've already built. This is a parody deals project. I'll link it in the cards and description if you wanna actually watch the full video of me building this project. But I'm gonna take a look at this relatively simple form to show you how much easier this playground is for creating these types of forms. As you can see, I have a product name input, I have a URL input, and I have a product description input. And if we look at the actual code for this, you can see I have a bunch of code and it's pretty much just generic Shad CN form stuff. You can see here, I'm using Zod with a schema. This schema is actually defined in a completely separate file. Then I have my on submit that's calling some particular action. And then the important part is we have the form with a little bit of styling and we have all of our different fields. And as you can see, it's very basic boilerplate stuff. There's really nothing complicated going on in this form at all. And creating this form by hand takes a little bit of time because you have to manually write out all of this code. But if we go ahead and we actually create this using this builder, I'll make it full screen so it's a little bit easier for you to see exactly what's going on. And we'll just clear out of everything that's in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, the very first thing we have is two inputs side by side. So I'm gonna create that. And then we also have a text area at the very bottom. So I'll create that. Then we can go ahead and say that this one I think was called product name, no description or anything. And we'll just give it name and we'll give it the type of text. Quick save on that. And now we have our product name. You can see it looks just like this one over here. Next one is gonna be enter your website URL. So we'll just paste that in there. It does have a description. So we'll just copy over that description so I can make sure it's exactly the same between these two forms. No placeholder. And this one's gonna be called URL. Now, unfortunately, this is a relatively new thing. So it doesn't have everything. For example, you can see there's no URL type, but we'll just leave it as text for now. And we can manually change that when it generates the code for us. Now, finally, we have our product description, which is our text area here. For a description, again, I'll just copy whatever description I had right here. There was no placeholder in my example, and this will just call description. There we go. Give that a quick save. Now you can see we've generated essentially the exact same code over here. We have some JSON that we can use if we want to essentially import this because this is like the JSON format that this particular playground uses. So we have a little JSON we can use, but most importantly, we have the code and you can see it generates all the different code for everything that we want directly inside of here. And I can just click copy and now I can bring that into my actual project and I can paste that in and that's going to give me essentially my exact same form. Now, not everything is going to work perfectly. I mean, I don't even need this import for uState. I don't know why that's there. And I don't need this import for Sonner because Shad CN has its own version of Toast that are built in. So I could just use that instead. And this function is not even used. So again, I don't know why that's being imported. It requires a little bit of cleanup because like I said, this is a pretty early stage project. But as you can see, it generates all this particular code for me. Like I said, I could use the Toast directly from Shad CN. So I could say const toast equals use toast. There we go. And now I get all my toast information. I believe I need to break that out like this. There we go. That's going to fix most of that stuff. I may need to change a little bit of the code, but as you can see, my actual forms themselves pretty much look exactly the same as the forms that I had before. Now, if I just go ahead and save this, it's probably not going to look perfectly exactly the same. As we can see, I'm already getting some errors going on. I believe that's because in my project, I have this exported as an actual function, not a default function. So I believe I called this product details form, just like that. There we go, that does fix it. As you can see, it's pretty close on the styling. Obviously, I wrote a lot of custom styles to make this work exactly like I want. So I would need to change some of the stylings, like removing this default padding, for example. It looks like, yeah, there we go, padding right here I would need to remove to get it to work perfectly. I would also need to make sure I get rid of maybe this max width. And there we go, you can see it's pretty much already exactly the same as what I had before. Now, I think this is really great when you're creating essentially the very first couple forms for a project because it gives you a really good boilerplate. You don't have to write out all of this code by hand. And then when you're ready to create your next project, honestly, what I do most of the time is I just take all of the code inside of one form and I just paste it into a brand new file and I start modifying that exact file. That I find is usually the easiest way to build new forms inside of a project that already has forms. But if you want, you could still use this form builder for doing that. Another thing that I think you're pretty much always going to need to change 
change is I hate putting my form schemas directly inside of my form themselves. I prefer to put them in their own file. So again, you'd have to extract this out into its own file and probably make some changes. For example, we have that URL input, so we need to change it to be a type of URL, wherever that input is at, there it is, type would have to be URL. Now these are relatively minor nitpicky things, especially with how new this particular page is. And I think over time, it's going to have a lot of improvements to it. As you can see, there's already a lot of inputs inside of here that aren't even a part of Shadzians. For example, a signature input, which if we preview that, I can actually just sign my name right in there. There's a bunch of other stuff directly inside of here that's not even a part of Shadzian, which I think is really cool. So if you think this is a cool project, I highly recommend going to GitHub. It's open source and be able to make some changes to it, add in different pull requests and issues and so on. Try to make this as good as you can, because I think it has a lot of potential. It's a little bit buggy right now, for example, especially if you drag around things like this that are in multiple rows, you can see it gets a little bit buggy. But I think with a few changes and some pull requests and so on, we can really make this a quite good project. So I'd recommend checking out the GitHub if you're interested in improving upon it. Otherwise, with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.